Welcome to another small video tutorial and in this video we're going to be looking at the Histogram Zones Photoshop plugin. I've already installed the plugin and brought it into Photoshop and in order to make this work effectively we need to bring in the Histogram panel and as we can see the Histogram Zone is a very small lightweight plugin and I've made it as small as we can so it doesn't take up much of this screen space. So the idea is that is to dock is to dock this to this panel. Now we can either dock it on top, so we just hover it over until we see the blue line. And as we can see now it's docked, so they're both like in a group. So that sits above the histogram. Or if we just tear it apart, we can dock it to the bottom, like so. So it is a personal preference. I mean, you could probably dock it to the side. I'm not sure if, no, it won't let it won't allow you to dock it. But it will. We can dock it to the side as well. So anywhere on these four corners, it's dockable. Personally, I just like to have it docked at the top. Just makes it more interesting or visually appealing to see for me. Right. So now that we've got that docked, how can we use it? Well, the idea is, is that it's made to represent all the 11 zones that the Photoshop hist histogram shows us. So in order to look at the image and find out which zone a particular part of the image falls in, we actually can use any of the selection tools. So we could use the lasso selection tool, the polygonal magnetic or the rectangle. Anything that creates a selection is going to work. So the first thing that I'm going to do is select the marquee, the rectangle marquee. Make sure that this set is set to normal. And now I can just literally just draw out any shape or any size on the image. And when I let go of the mouse, the histogram updates. And now we can line up with our eyes where the tones actually fall. So we, as we can see in that particular selection, the falling between zones one and just above zones nine. Just talking about the individual zones, it starts off at zone zero and it ends up at zone 10. So we've got zero, one, two, three, four, five is the middle, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. So that's how the zones are mapped out. And the target for digital printing is to try and get the low values somewhere just between two and a half to just under three. And then for the upper values, somewhere between eight and a half and nine, you should be able to retain some kind of texture within that tonal range. Now that's all dependent on the paper that you use and the type of printer that you use and obviously how that paper responds to different tones. And I do have other programs available to actually help you map those tones out. So back to the histogram zones. Once we've made a selection, if we want to move the selection around, we can just bring the mouse into the center and as you can see, we can move it around. And then when we let go, the histogram is going to update. So as we can see in this particular selection, we've actually got some areas that are falling into pure black. And then the highest values are going up to round about zone 8, just above zone 8, if we just line that up manually. Remember, it's 0 to 10. And then the, the, you can count the zones backwards and forwards. So what happens if you want to do a more precise measurement? Well, that can be done again in the same principle. But this time we're going to take the marquee tool, the rectangle one, and I'm going to change it from normal to fixed size. And then you can enter a value in. Now, the smaller the value, the more accurate it's going to be. So I'm going to enter in one pixel by one pixel. So this is basically going to measure just one pixel square. And if I zoom in on this image, 
And let's see, we take an example, we'll just click once here. We can see how pretty accurate it is for measuring just one pixel. So I have, if I have an area which I'm concerned about the brightness values, I mean, we're going up to nearly 500% here. If I click that, knowing that's the brightest value, I can see that it's actually more or less falling onto zone 8. And I'm quite happy with that because I know that the paper that I use can retain textured detail right up to between zones 8 and 9. So that's fine. And then if we come down the image, I might want to look at a darker value. And let's say I'm going to look at this area here. And we can see that at one pixel it's showing us probably zones one and a half. And we can apply this anywhere the image. It doesn't matter where you click the mouse, it's going to show you the actual tone at one pixel level. If you find that one pixel is too small and you want to do a five pixel, for example, we just change that value to five pixel by five pixel. And then when we re-click, we're getting a five pixel image, or a five pixel selection, should I say. And again, we can move that round. And now if we come back up to the, sort of the petal of the flower, at five pixels by five pixels, we're actually falling between this zone and this zone. So that would be 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. So just above 6 to just above 7. So they're the tones that occupy that particular 5x5 five five pixel. Now you can actually create your own tool sets for these. And that's very simple to do as well. So let's say that we, we like to have a value of 10 by 10 pixel. So when we click that, we're going to get, make that 10 pixel. We're going to get a 10 pixel square selection. And if we like that as a regular selection, we can save that as a tool set rather than having to keep manually entering that. So get the value that you want, come to this top left hand corner of Photoshop, press the down arrow and then press the plus icon. And then you can just enter a name. So I'm going to put 10 by 10. And then press OK. And then that will save that as a preset. I have already got one saved as 5 by 5. So how we access those. Let's say, for example, that I was doing some editing to the image using the brush tool. And I want to check the values. Select the me the marquee rectangle tool. This can be back to normal. Come up to the down arrow and then choose one of the presets that you've made. So if I select the 10 by 10 and take a click, so it gives me a 10 by 10 rectangle selection. I've already got a 5 by 5 selected. And clicking that will give me the 5x5. Five five. So you can actually build up your own selection of tool sets depending on the size of selection that you want to measure. So let me just go back to the 10x10 10 10, and I'm just going to click in this shadow area between these two petals. And it's showing me that it's around zone 3 and there are some pixels just occupying zones 3.5. So this is a handy tool to use just to make sure that throughout the editing process that you're not actually going out of your tonal range. And as I say, the tonal range depends on your own personal workflow, your printer and paper combination. And I do stress that if you can spend a little bit of time establishing where you can print out to, what is the lowest tone and the highest tone that you can retain detail, you can more or less guarantee that as you're going through the editing process, you're not going to have any nasty surprises when you come to print on that particular paper. For the paper that I use, I know that I can go down to about zone two and certainly up to about zone eight and a half and still retain 
good textural detail. So looking at this particular image, it's all about the, the rose to me. And I've got some very bright areas, but as we can see, they're actually falling between zone 8 and zone 9. So that's about the upper limit for me on this particular paper. So there we have it. It's just a, a very, very lightweight panel, this one. Uh, there's no buttons to click. Um, it's just there to help you establish the zones. And I feel that this particular panel works hand in hand with the zone system panel that I created about two or three weeks ago. There was only one button on it. I did say there was no buttons, but if you click the hamburger icon, we do have an about, and that just opened up a dialog box where you can take a one click to the website. You can email, email me direct and it gives you the plugin information. And then that just closes the panel. So that's the only button on the panel. And the rest of it is is so simple to use, but yet the the effects that it can give us is to enable us to make sure that uh, we're not clipping those lower values, if that's what we want to do. And then certainly maintain that we're not clipping the high values, again, if that's what our goal is. So that's the Histogram Zones panel. If you haven't already bought the Digital Zone Systems panel, I suggest that you look at that one as well because using these two in tandem, um, I can see being quite a helpful little workflow. So until next time, thank you very much and we'll see you later. Bye for now.